morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, could we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you.
Good morning. It is my great pleasure on this beautiful day to welcome you to Morgan Park Academy's 144th commencement. Today, we honor the efforts and accomplishments of the graduates here before us. Together with their families and friends, we usher them into the next phase of their lives, and we recognize a class of educated in the MBA tradition as independent thinkers and global leaders. Our distinguished alum guests are such leaders. Welcome to Dr. Frank Bird, this year's commencement speaker and recipient of the Richard L. Duchesswa Integrity and Values Alumni Award. Welcome also to Mr. Duchesswa, the inspiration for and namesake of that award, and to Ambassador L. Hoffman, who received the award five years ago and is here today to present it to Dr. Bird, his friend and classmate through both Morgan Park Military Academy and the United States Military Academy. Welcome to MPA faculty and staff, students, family members and friends, and to our trustees, including our board chair, Mr. Rod Rothy. And most of all, welcome to the class of 2017. You have long anticipated this day, some with eagerness, some with anxiety, some with a complicated mix of emotions. But whatever you are feeling here today, you deserve to hold a keen sense of pride. You've made it. When I think of this class, in fact, of Morgan Park Academy as a whole, I think of the importance of service. That meant something very different for the graduates of Morgan Park Military Academy. But global service remains a hallmark of our school and a passion for our students. Our community works hard to maintain a culture of giving back to others, and this year was no exception. Students gave their time, talent, and treasure at home and all over the world in service of causes larger than themselves. They raised more than $3,000 for HIV and AIDS research through our Dance for Life event. They spearheaded our drive for a new group oh, they spearheaded our drive for a new greenhouse, an outdoor classroom here on campus. They did service work abroad during Project Week and collected more than a thousand winter coats for donation to Syrian refugees during their families being driven from their homes. To graduate, all of these young men and women behind me were required to complete 80 hours of service, and most of them soared well beyond that benchmark. I am so very proud of the class of 2017 for not only reaching their own individual goals, but for always finding ways to help others along the way. They have had no better example in this than the three teachers who are retiring from our faculty today. For decades, Tom Malcolm, Kathy Keelan, and Carol Bolliker molded, modeled selfishness and caring for generations of MPA students, helping to make our school what it is today. Those alum, in fact, have given back and helped us plant a new tree in the school garden to my right, dedicated in honor of Mr. Malcolm. <laughs> Yet, I would say to our graduates, that for all they have accomplished to this point, your job doesn't end today. As you embark on your collegiate lives, please remember what it means to give back. Remember Mr. Malcolm, Mrs. Bolliker, and Mrs. Keelan, and their dedication to the MPA community. Remember the parents and teachers who helped you along this journey and who contribute so widely to your experience here. You can also remember one of my favorite Maya Angelou quotes. When we give cheerfully and accept gratefully, everyone is blessed. We all see that in practice every day at MPA, and I encourage you to carry that lesson forward with you as you, as our newly minted independent thinkers and global leaders. I now would like to welcome our board chair, Mr. Raj Rothy, to the podium. Thank you, Merce, for your exceptional leadership. 
this school wouldn't be thriving without what you've done for us. And I think everyone here knows how hard you work, how dedicated you are, and how you lead not only with passion, but with your heart. Uh, the cultural values that you bring really thrive at MPA's environment, and because of you, we are where we are today. I'd also like to thank the teachers. It is really a heartfelt thank you. I have one child graduating today, one that graduated a couple years ago, and one that is still under your jurisdiction. But I do know that they're better because of what you do, not only in the classroom and outside the classroom and molding their character. I'd also like to thank Mr. Malcolm. You were my eighth grade science teacher. I know it's bittersweet for so many of us to see you go, but we know there's better things ahead of you and you will always have a very fond place in our hearts. <laughs> to our trustees, not only do you give economically, but you also give with your great intellect. You provide great consultation to MERS and to the staff and to those in the administration and your tireless work ethic also makes a tremendous difference in this institution and where we're going. Thank you very much. <laughs> to the parents and, grad and grandparents that are here, it goes without saying you've had a tremendous influence on your child, not only in the home, but your willingness to sacrifice to send them to this institution. It is not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to write the tuition check. But ultimately what you see between that responsibility and the love and the caring you give them and the guidance that you've provided them, what I believe you see is, as Merce said earlier, we have global leaders, we have independent thinkers, and the DNA and the fabric that they come from is really starting at home. So thanks to each and every one of you. My daughter, as I said earlier, is part of this graduating class. She had one piece of advice for me, which was to keep this speech short. <laughs> so I'll try to do so. My message is fairly simple. Many of you entered here as children, you became students, and now you're leaving as adults. Your responsibilities are growing, and you will soon realize the value of the education you have received. You will be ahead of your classmates during the next step that so many of you will take in so many different areas. Your ability to deal with diverse environments and learn from diverse classmates. I see this every day in my house with the friends that Savi has that she brings over. The learning doesn't end in the classroom. That's just the beginning. The learning in the environment that these children are in and these students are in provides an exceptional laboratory for their future growth as well. You have a global perspective. The, perhaps the best example of that is what I witnessed yesterday. Can you imagine a student coming from China as one of our international students, spending four years here and being awarded the highest GPA in social studies and history in Morgan Park Academy amongst the senior class? Matthew, you're a shining example to all of us. Not only do you have a strong curriculum, but we have not avoided things that have unfortunately fallen by the wayside at other, other institutions. We spend a lot of time developing character. The curriculum doesn't end in the classroom. It's just the beginning, as I said earlier. The athletic field is yet another example of that. Our valedictorian today really embodies that spirit, not only as a valedictorian and great academic proudness, but also as our female athlete in the school. Thank you, Bart. The foundation and character that you show, the compassion that you show, is embodied in everyone in the class behind me. They lead with the NPA way, and that is something that I know is near and dear to everyone's heart. So to all of you, congratulations and a job well done. Your foundation that you have, that you have gained at NPA will serve you well. I know many of you are, if you believe my daughter, tired of your high school experience. But you know what, that's actually a good thing. You should be tired of your high school experience because you're ready for a next step, and it's gonna be a big step. You're ready to be a difference maker, not just a productive member of society, but somebody that will make a difference and leave the world in a better place than the way you found it. Look on the stage today, look out in the audience today. Take a deep, 
long look. What do you see? Well, I'll tell you what I see. It's not just a beautiful day. It's not just a gorgeous campus. We don't just see nice buildings with ivy growing on the buildings over there. What I see is excellence. The best example of excellence is some of the alumni that we have on the stage today. Aspirations to us all. Dick Jachiswa is a self-made man. He's one of the most successful businessmen of his generation. He did this with hard work, determination, and we at MPA would like to think we had a small role in it with his education. Ambassador Hoffman has a similar story. You'll hear about his background shortly, and you'll be equally impressed. Finally, Dr. Bird's background will be also presented to you. Again, impressive. Yet each of these people did not simply stop at professional achievements. They reached higher. They reached to make a difference for others. They supported multitudes of charities. They have raised wonderful families. And they are creating and leaving the world in a much better place than the way they found it because of their actions. Inspire to be like them. Inspire to be better than them. We will all be proud of you to reach and exceed these heights. You each have a gift. Your job is now to figure out what that gift is. Is it being the best doctor, lawyer, entrepreneur? Is it to start a not-for-profit and make a difference helping others? Is it to be a teacher at MPA, like Ms. Concanon, another MPA alum, I may add? Or is it to go where no man and woman has gone before and take us to new heights and to new destinies? You each have a skill set which you will help which will help you navigate this path. Academic excellence, life skills, a global framework, a diverse environment have been the learning ground for you for each of the past four years in your high school. Your foundation is strong and firm. Now make us even more proud and build upon it. Congratulations to the class of 2017. We're excited to see where life will take you. Morgan Park Academy's highest award for alumni is the Richard L. Duchess Law Integrity and Values Alumni Award. Given annually in recognition of Mr. Duchess Law's lifetime achievements, outstanding professional success, and service to the academy, his community, and society. As you've heard before and you'll hear often, Mr. Duchess Law's example of accomplishments and service has for decades inspired classmates and colleagues and it has inspired all of us here at MPA to ensure that his beloved alma mater stays true to his mission and values that have guided us for nearly a century and a half. We are so glad to have him here with us today. Thank you. Five years ago, our first recipient of the Duchess Law Award was Ambassador Al Hoffman, who is here today to present the award to his classmate, Dr. Frank Bird. After graduating from Morgan Park Military Academy and the United States Military Academy at West Point, Mr. Hoffman served as a fighter pilot for the United States Air Force and later earned his MBA from Harvard Business School. Prior to serving as the United States Ambassador to Portugal from 2005 to 2007, he was founder, CEO, and chairman of the board of WCI Communities, a leading community developer, home builder, and real estate services company serving the areas of Florida, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Washington, D.C. His interest and involvement with education, the arts, the business community span many, many years. He has taken active, active leadership roles as chairman of organizations such as the Florida Council for Economic Education, the Florida Arts Council, and the Florida Chamber of Commerce. From 2001 through 2003, he served as chairman of the Florida Council of 100, a form of strategic thinkers comprised of the state's top business leaders. In 2005, Mr. Hoffman was awarded Florida's highest civilian honor from the governor and secretary of state designated as the great Floridian for his civic and philanthropic efforts on behalf of the people of all of Florida. Of course, I like to think of him as a Morgan Park Academy alumni. Please help me welcome Ambassador Al Hoffman. Well, good morning. Good morning. 
And uh, I would like to say hello to uh, the head of school, Mercedes Shepherd, for being here with a lovely lady. I'd like to say hello to uh, Raj and thank him for his great service to, to the school. And particularly, I'd like to say hello and thank Dick Dutch as well over there, my old buddy that I've known for so many years. We served together for political purposes, believe it or not, years ago, and because uh, we shared some of the same political ideologues. Maybe you all don't do that, but we did, and we had a great time doing it. And uh, Dick was always there, prompt, on time, and available, and uh, helped us a tremendous amount. We got to know each other pretty well. And uh, every derby he goes to in, at Lexington, why, he's a, he's, a, he's a grand man. I'd like to say hello and congratulate the distinguished faculty that's here today. And also, the unbelievable, fantastic, incredible class of 2017. <laughs> It's my high honor to, to introduce Dr. Frank Byrd, but I want to take a couple of points of personal privilege. First of all, Frank Byrd is three days older than I am. <laughs> and I got to tell you, for the last 83 years, I've had to call him sir every time I say that. <laughs> you know, we grew up together as kids, and our mothers would have little birthday parties jointly together when we were just little tykes. Um, hang on a second. I got it. And uh, he was a scrappy guy, you know. And I can remember days in the '40s. We would we would meet up at his house with a gang of guys, and we'd go running off into Dan Ryan Woods and playing war with toy guns. <laughs> true story. That's absolutely true. Frank at the academy here was the scrappiest football player. He was always the leader. He was always voted the captain. He got to choose the sides on his teams. I never got chosen. <laughs> but I never, nonetheless followed him, and I worshiped and adored the ground he walked on as a, as a youngster. And watching him play football here at Morgan Park Military Academy, with his joy, he was always the leader, he was always the standout. Probably graduated as the best player in the class. So guess what? West Point called him up, said, we want you. And on account of that, he went to West Point to play football, which he did his entire career there. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to follow in his footsteps. So we marched off to West Point together, reporting in on July 1st, 1952. But you know, as the months and the years went by, life got a lot more compressed and we lived differently because as the years dragged on, Frank had the distinguished honor to become one of the leading one of the leading cadets in receiving demerits. <laughs> and you know, we have an area in West Point called Central Area, and it's like about as long as a football field, all concrete, like just like this. And on Saturday afternoons, instead of going out or what doing what you will, I saw Frank many, many, many times marching back and forth across the area, about from here to Hanson Hall and back, and all the way down. And he'd carry that nine pound rifle and a big heavy overcoat in the dead of winter, marching back and forth. A couple of times I even had to march the area. And at the same time, we would pass each other with that rifle and that overcoat. And I'd look at Frank as he, as he passed me by and he'd look at me. And Frank always had that eternal smirk on his face. <laughs> and you know, he still does have that eternal smirk. <laughs> and as the years went by, I, I detected a very significant and deep, uh, a deep, uh, uh, sophisticated disdain for our dire strikes that we were in. Now, Frank is no longer, that carries that sophisticated disdain, but he still carries that eternal smirk. <laughs> so we both went into the Air Force when we graduated. Fortunately, Frank went on to become an intelligence officer in the Air Force, serving with the 13th Air Force in Southeast Asia. And um, believe me, from 1956 to 60, he handled very sensitive information, I am sure. I was fortunate enough to become a fighter pilot. I was stationed with the 12th Air Force, the 36th Fighter Wing, 
based in Bitburg, Germany. Now, after his service, Frank went on and got his master's and his PhD degree. Can you believe that? <laughs> Both at once, Frank. At the University of Chicago, and he became a founding member of the University of Maryland. Believe, now, here's the, here's, the, here's the significant part. He taught for 34 years. He chaired the Department of Political Science, and he directed the, and formed the International Studies Center down there in Baltimore. What a guy. So what did I do during my service? I sat in a cockpit of a fighter airplane. I had a 28 KT atom bomb strapped to the belly of my airplane. Now, for those of you that don't, might not know this, 28 KT stands for 28,000 tons. Multiply that by 2,000 pounds per ton. That is 56 million pounds of explosives that would have been delivered to a Russian target somewhere who knows when. But I can remember standing, we had a high, high alert status with Russia, and I kept standing cockpit alert in the seat of that fighter plane, ready to launch at a moment's notice. Thank God we didn't have to launch and fly 1,500 miles at low altitude and high speed to a target somewhere east of us. Thank God, because the uh, results would have been horrendous. So, what uh, I just want to also say that, and I want to ask Frank a question. Frank, since you have uh, given so much service to this country in, the term, in the terms of foreign affairs, you're one of the world's authorities now, the Baltimore Council of Foreign Affairs, which you head, and you've addressed multi-peopled multi audiences, all dedicated to educating citizens in foreign affairs. So my question to you is, you're the boss, you command all the military forces, and you, you see uh, on alert the people that are all along the West Coast serving, standing alert right now, you, you get notified that there's an ICBM that has been launched apparently from North Korea and is heading our way. I want to know what you would do. Would you send an anti-missile up and destroy that and starting a war, or what would you do? Unknown whether the tip of that ICBM uh, carries a nuclear weapon. Now I say this because I know that a lot of you, it's not, you're, not, you're not interested in this very much today, and I don't blame you, but it's, it's, it's a serious question that we're currently facing today, and I know that uh, you'll address it shortly to with great success, I'm sure. So, it is my great thrill to be able to introduce my eternal classmate and forever friend, Dr. Frank Bird. thing is I have about 25 minutes before I have to answer that question. <laughs> Head of School Shepherd, Mr. Duchess Wall, Ambassador Hoffman, parents, family, friends, faculty, class of 2017. I, I'm certainly honored to join you today and I do so quite modestly. Uh, it's a great honor to receive the Duchess Ball Award. I think I do so in a way uh, uh, on behalf of all faculty of, uh, of the Academy. Mr. Duchess Ball, uh, thanks to Morgan Park Military Academy often uh, for what it contributed to his foundations. And certainly this Academy extends to him enormous gratitude for the charity which he has extended to help preserve and nourish this particular institution. Head of School Shepherd deserves our gratitude as she leads the faculty in the noble endeavor to maintain and enhance this very special institution. All commencements are very much alike. Uh, speeches are very seldom remembered and quickly forgotten. Congratulations are always in order. 
for those who have achieved a particular goal. Gratitude, properly, is expressed to all of those who have contributed a positive impact to this graduating class and their particular path. Commencements are marked by the beginning of something. By definition, they are a beginning, usually in this case, college. But they also mark a process, one of developing or constructing a vigorous and secure life on one hand, and on the other, one of ends and purposes and goodness. I'm not familiar with all the experiences of this particular class of 2017 or their preparations in their lives' paths, but I do know my own experiences and therefore please allow me to use them as I put myself in your shoes. The graduates of the classes of 1952 and 2017 and all others share the same life-building endeavor. Captain Francis Gray is an iconic figure in the history of the Morgan Park Military Academy. He taught there from 1917 until 1960. There's still a fellowship here in his name. It said that his B students became A students at Ivy League institutions. All of our instructors were members of the Illinois National Guard, and we exchanged salutes when passing. Captain Gray, as I recall, was aged, perhaps two decades younger than I am now, with wispy white hair, a perpetually wrinkled shirt, a flick of the wrist for a salute, and a grunt for good morning. He was harsh with inattentive students. He was not a particularly friendly faculty member. I entered the academy as a scholarship student two weeks late. My first class was at 8 o'clock with Captain Gray in the former Blake Hall. I was seated on the left of the first row. Captain Gray, with his consistently economical use of language, turned to me and said, out. <laughs> to this day, I don't know why. But my best guess is that I may have been talking when he wanted to start the class. Having been removed from my first, before my first class began, I wandered the stone's boat on this side primarily to stay away from buildings. And I hope desperately no one will ask me what I was doing or not doing. I was curious, and I watched Captain Gray the next day. I watched him the next. I watched eight semesters of that. His message was pretty clear. For 50 minutes, the only thing that was important in the entire world was the blackboard, the white chalk, and what it said to you. The problem must be clearly identified, unclouded by excessive rhetoric. All information relevant to that problem must be comprehensively and assembled. All of one's equations and numbers were to be ordered neatly so that simple errors could be avoided. One must pursue that process until it was completed in QED. Of course, it was a teaching for a lifetime. Captain Gray did not speak to me much during those four years. He did give me extra work in math, in, in uh, geometry, which made me quite proud. And he looked in at the library to see if I was doing it, and I was, and I was glad he looked in. He stopped me one day along this very path here, my senior year, and said, how would you like to go to Harvard? And he proceeded to enroll me in that process of exams, college boards, interviews, and home visits. There were 26 national scholarships in the United States, two for the state of Illinois. I was awarded one of them, but only in July, after I'd already started plebe year and beast barracks at West Point. So I declined that. But I am grateful to Captain Gray for the very solid preparation which he allowed, which allowed me to do well on college boards, the NROTC exams, 
Years later, I sat with Captain Gray on his veranda, and he told me what his former students were doing, contradicting totally his enormously impersonal approach during the educational process. My best friend said that Captain Gray wasn't for everyone, but he got my attention, and I remain profoundly grateful. Captain Gray's straightforward approach to problem solving applies to all areas of life, focusing on a problem, marshalling all relevant considerations, marching through the steps of analysis in an orderly fashion, diligently to an end, is a sound process in all things. However, in many instances in life, it takes great fortitude and psychological courage to continue to the end of an analysis or a problem. In this, I am reminded of the address which Ambassador Hoffman delivered here five years ago. Quite unusually, he shared a number of self-doubts and fears with those graduates. My experience is that most people are too guarded to do that. However, he was frank with that graduating class. One example he gave was when his jet fighter almost crashed, and after that he had feared, he had fear every time he got into the cockpit. However, he never missed a mission. Overcoming fear and self-doubt is courageous. One often needs courage and fortitude to complete a project. Ambassador Hoffman's message was simple. Don't quit. You'll be amused, I'm sure, but I should note that Winston Churchill in his dotage, Britain's great statesman, perhaps the greatest of the 20th century, Return to his equivalent of MPA, Harrow, and when introduced said simply, never give up. Never, never, never. The message of Pastor Hoffman and Winston Churchill was identical. In addition to having a sound, pragmatic approach through life, one needs a sense of purpose. Captain A.J. Corral, our English teacher, was a great favor of many. Actually, I only remember two instances from his classes, but one in particular was important. It was a surprise essay request in class, in 30 an minutes answer, what is happiness? I kept that paper, and I've read it again. I read it again about 15 or 20 years ago, and I still like it. I still agree with it. Of course, reflection on happiness and the good life are the great philosophical questions of ancient Greece and subsequent thinkers. What is good and what ultimately makes you happy? I was fortunate to have friends at Morgan Park who liked talking about such things. Now we must be grateful. Grateful is critical. Great gratitude is critical for those individuals and institutions which point us in a constructive direction, whether it be to analyze the purposes of life or solving problems like Captain Gray, or reminding us of the psychological strength needed for courage and fortitude, as Ambassador Hoffman and Winston Churchill did. Many deserve our gratitude. Coach Josie Emba, who lived in the house right next to Hanson Hall, was absolutely critical to my chances to play football at Michigan and West Point. Neighborhoods matter. My Beverly had many watchful and helpful adults, and doing well was a norm. Friends often remind us of our own shortcomings and what has to be developed. However, one has to be grounded well enough to know when and when not to be influenced by people and things. One's basic values, one's character, needs to be internal and not simply a response to immediate external circumstances. Frederick Douglass, the great African-American leader in the 19th century, was separated from his white companions when traveling on a train and sent to the baggage car. When his white friends commiserated with him on the lack of dignity of that circumstance, he replied that no one takes away the dignity of Frederick Douglass. Another leader in another century having gone through a similar experience, said, it was as if a veil had been dropped across my identity. I like Frederick Douglass's internal strength, 
which allowed him not to be dominated by external circumstances. George Washington said that everything I am I owe to my mother. Parents and other adults are so important. I was perhaps seven or eight when swinging an imaginary baseball bat, I asked my mother what she would like me to be when I grew up. She answered to the side of my obvious baseball player suggestion and said, I want you to be a good man. I certainly didn't fully understand what that meant, but I knew it was serious and important, and my memory retains the details of that moment very clearly. The appreciation of goodness is all around us. I was six years old when I first and for the only time in my life was in a room in which the thickness of emotion could be, as they say, cut by a knife. That profound respect of a church congregation was for the presence of the church's two missionaries, Reverend Burkle, who served in Africa, and Boko Tushiami, who served in Japan. Over the years, I have heard many criticisms of missionaries. However, years later, at a dinner in Beijing, I was seated at a table with Chai Zemin, the first ambassador of the People's Republic of China to the United States. And the conversation moved to why American and Chinese, Americans and Chinese like each other, which I believe they do. The ambassador, who had joined the Communist Party as a teenager, rose through the competitive politics, party politics of Beijing and became its mayor, later became a member, member of the ruling Politburo. A reason he gave for that affection between two peoples was the American missionaries. What an extraordinary source for the recognition of acts of goodness and what an extraordinary recognition of good people. In another part of the world, on another occasion, in Muscat, the capital of Muslim Oman, in meeting with a retired Dutch Reformed medical missionary, he remarked that he had probably helped someone in almost every family in that little country. He and his wife, who by the way was an authority on the seas around Oman, had intended to retire to a winterized cabin in upstate New York. The Sultan, two days earlier, had invited him to the palace and offered them a home in Oman for their lifetimes, a statement of gratitude for what he had done. Moral guideposts are essential to every profession. One of my West Point classmates, Norman Schwarzkopf, became a national folk hero having commanded a quick and decisive victory in the first Gulf War, and having in a for his forceful way dominated the media. I returned for my 35th class reunion in that spring, primarily to see how Storman Norman, as he was known, would handle being a folk hero. He could not have answered my curiosity better. At our first dinner of the weekend, he was asked to speak, and he gave a short 10-minute statement. In the middle of it, he said that often during Desert Shield, which preceded Desert Storm, of course, he would ask, God, why me? In that moment of self-doubt, he would play a tape of General Douglas MacArthur's last address to the Corps of Cadets. He quoted a, a, a part of it, which referred to the long gray line, West Point imagery, and said that if you don't do your duty, a million ghosts will rise in olive drab, brown khaki, blue and gray, and thunderingly repeat, duty, honor, country. By the long gray line reference, he graciously included every classmate in the room in his grand moment. More importantly, he underlined that guiding and strengthening him in his profession was the moral obligation of duty. In the University of Chicago's recent remarkable statement on its freedom of expression, Robert Hutchins, one of the great presidents of that institution, was quoting as having said, free inquiry is indispensable to the good life. 
that universities exist for the sake of such inquiries, and without it, they would not be universities. The essential moral quality of the academic life, freedom of inquiry, parallels the essential moral obligation of a soldier, duty. West Point and the University of Chicago have different missions and different core values. However, both are serious, purposeful, morally grounded, and governed by integrity. Most of you will be starting college this fall in what appears to be a rather unique moment in American history. An elected president and his colleagues and party are under a passionate, well-organized, and comprehensive assault. The congressional partisan opposition is nearly unanimous. Much of the elite media is intensely opposed. Government bureaucrats are involved. Strong pressure groups and significant wealthy opponents are united and intense. Investigations of potential interference in a, in a legal process and of possible collusion with a foreign power are underway. Inevitably, the process of governing has been slowed. The passions of the moment certainly will be at work on many campuses and many incoming freshmen will be drawn into the political vortex. All of this raises the fundamental question of prudence. What is the morally best to do under the circumstances? Resist the government or depend on good people within the system to make it work? Turning turmoil within our political system is not unexpected. Since the nation's founding, we have been aware of the frictions occasioned by diversity of religion, occupation, regional culture, ethnicity, and wealth. We have also recognized the theoretical dangers of popular government itself, the dangers of authoritarianism, and the dangers of inequality. Institutional safeguards and social norms have long been in place and are evolving. Given the many frictions and working parts within our system, it's quite remarkable that the system has worked so well for such a long period of time. It's probable that we are near the pinnacle of this contemporary period of unrest. I do believe that our political, economic, and social systems will survive intact. Specific critical elements such as freedom of expression, while challenged, are staunchly established. I was impressed, pleased, and proud of the statement of the faculty and administration of the University of Chicago, a traditional liberal champion of freedom of speech, which I believe is the guidepost for the vast majority of educational institutions within the United States. Hopefully, grievance will be sat grievances will be satisfied within the existing system of popular government by our public servants who are ultimately responsible to and for that system. However turbulent, class of 2017, your campus life may be, always keep in mind that your educational objectives are to build a good and practical life within our particular experiment in popular government. Stay cool, open-eyed, be sure of yourself, think clearly, seek excellence, work hard, and aim at the good. The Morgan Park Academy is historic. It's a classic element within the American educational system. All of us certainly wish the class of 2017 the very best as it proceeds in building lives of value. Let me close by paraphrasing part of my favorite benediction. Go out into the world and hold on to the good. Return no one evil for evil. Encourage the faint-hearted. Help the weak and suffering. Honor everyone. Good luck to all of you.
Thank you, Dr. Bird. Now we have a few student awards to give out, starting with the House Cup. Like many schools throughout the world, Morgan Park Academy divides off students, faculty, and staff into four houses. Named for four giants of MPA history, they are Blake House, Norton House, Theodore House, and Withington House. And starting next year, we will have a fifth house dedicated just last month in honor of Mr. Bell. The house system provides a framework for intramural athletic charity, fundraising, and community competitions. Students win points for participation in all facets of school life, including academic achievement, co-curricular involvement, good deeds, and volunteer work. At the end of the year, the house with the most points wins the cup. This year's winner is Norton House. And I have the captains of Norton, the senior captains, Celeste Payne from Punnett, Annika Echoes, and Alex Fleming come up. Master's honor and high honor rolls include a whopping 20 members of the class of 2017 who fought off senioritis and continued their academic excellence and all the way to graduation. That's nearly three quarters of this graduating class. Certificates for our other upper school students will be sent home. On the honor roll for the semester are students who earned a grade point average of at least 3.3 in all major subjects. Honorees this semester include one graduating senior, Eli Wallenstein. <laughs> On the high honor roll for the semester are students who earned a grade point average of at least 3.7 in all major subjects. The class of 2017 is well represented. When I call your name, please stand up. Divya Avula, Ariel Bachelor, Hannah Brannett, Manu Clutches, Barat Clutches, Shin Ming Hu, Daniel J. Sutasan, Alana Leigh Phillips, Anson Agano, Celeste Ping Pumipanit, Savi Rafi, Davy Salwan, Shani Shelby, Anastasia Stanley, Maria Alouette, Woo! Tilly Wagner, Ashley Wilson, Etta Yang, and Sylvia Zhao. Woo! Overall, academic distinction prizes go to the students in the upper school class with the highest academic average for the school year. Their names are placed on the honor plaque hanging in Alumni Hall. This year's freshman winner is Annika Eccles. In the sophomore class, Angela Cabrera. In the junior class, Katarina Stanley. And in our senior class, Anastasia Stanley. We also survey the upper school as a whole for three scholar awards in the form of gold, silver, and bronze medals given to students with the highest academic averages in the upper school this school year. The bronze medal goes to Ariel Bachelor. The silver medal goes to Anastasia Stanley.
and the gold medal goes to Katerina Stanley. The Jerome Farrell Junior Leadership Award is the most prestigious award given to students at the end of their junior year. It rewards faithfulness to the MPA tradition of excellence in citizenship, superior scholarship, and dedication to the enhancement of the common good. Recipients are chosen by the upper school faculty and receive a $4,000 scholarship for their senior year at the academy. Here today to join me in presenting this award are Jerome's son, Jay Thrall, and his grandson, Crystal. <laughs> Jerome Thrall was a proud alumnus of the class of 1944, a successful businessman and a devoted family man. Generous to, Millie, to many philanthropic causes, including Morgan Park Academy. Mr. Thrall was inducted into the MPA Hall of Fame in 1997 for his incredible support of the school. Upon his passing in 2009, his children established this award in his honor. Our first recipient has been a standout student, an ambassador for MPA, and a fixture on the high honor roll since joining us in the ninth grade. He plays varsity tennis, sings with the upper school chorus, and has a passion for history that has helped him win MPA Book Awards for both world history and U.S. history. Our first recipient is Theo Cavello. Our second recipient has also been a member of the High Honor Roll throughout her three years at MPA. She is a member of the Service Council and is among our best athletes in recent years, helping lead the volleyball team to three regional championships, starting as catcher for the softball team, and reaching a thousand career points faster than any player in the history of the girls' basketball program. Mr. Drahazo expects it won't be long before she owns MPA's career scoring record. Our second, second recipient is Isis Rodriguez. Congratulations to both of our recipients. <laughs> to graduate with cum laude distinction, students must be ranked in the top 20% of the graduating class. Students in the cum laude society receive pins and certificates and are wearing gold caps today to signify their membership. This year's cum laude graduates are Divya Avula, Ariel Bachelor, Gerard Fletches, Bobby Rothy, Anastasia Stanley, and Mario Villa. J. Wolf Service Award is presented to the senior with the most outstanding record of service to the school and the community as selected by the service club advisors. Recipients' names are engraved on the plaque to be displayed in Hanson Hall. The award is named for Martin Wolf, the Academy's longtime director of service learning. This year's winners are Banu and Barat Fletches.
The Jean Landon Taylor Alumni Award is presented each year on behalf of the Alumni Association. A bronze plaque goes to a senior scholar in recognition of academic achievement, citizenship, and participation in school activities as determined by vote of the upper school faculty. The award is named in honor of Jane Landon Taylor, who served as an English an instructor of English and head of the English department at Morgan Park Military Academy from 1929 to 1945. This year, the award goes to Celeste Ping Pumipanit. The Scholarship Award is presented each year to a senior scholar in recognition of scholastic excellence, citizenship, and participation in school activities. It is chosen by vote of the upper school faculty and carries with it a bronze plaque. This year, the award goes to Divya Avula. The Harry B. D. Abels Award is presented annually to the class salutatorian based on four-year cumulative grade point average. The winner receives a United States flag and a silver plaque. The award is named for Colonel Harry Delmont Abels, who joined the faculty of Morgan Park Academy in 1898 under Headmaster William Rainey Harper. Colonel Abels taught chemistry and physics and was instrumental in the reorganization of the school in 1914. He served officially as superintendent of Morgan Park Military Academy from 1917 until his retirement in 1945. This year's winner is Ariel Batchelor. Finally, the Hayden E. Jones Cup is presented annually to the class valedictorian as determined by the administration based on the four-year cumulative grade point average. To be eligible, a student must have attended the academy for at least three years, including 11th and 12th grades. The winner receives a gold plaque and has his or her name inscribed on the cup. Its namesake, Lieutenant Colonel Hayden Jones, joined the faculty of Morgan Park Academy as an instructor in Latin and history in 1899, while the academy was still part of the University of Chicago. In 1907, as we separated from the university, he joined Colonel Abels and reorganized the school as Morgan Park Academy. And from 1919 until 1946, he served as superintendent. This beautiful quad was named in his honor in 1937, along with this top student award. This year, the war goes to Barack Glitches. you all has been the biggest honor and today's been probably the best day of our all of our high school careers but if you can dream it you can do it well that is if you do it after 11 a.m. because there's no way any high school student would ever wake up before then and I know most of the high school cl our class of 2017 wouldn't be awake before this time anyway but open your eyes this isn't a dream anymore this is a reality we're finally on stage graduating and believe me, for those of you who have known me, I've been sleeping and dreaming for more than enough for the past 18 years. Four years ago, today, I was sitting in the back row as a freshman. Yes, I sat there watching the valedictorian of the class, a senior class four years ago, give their speech. And I dreamed and believed that I would be the one on stage today. Oh. 
From the very first day of freshman year, I began working hard academically, socially, and physically to be able to stand in front of you all, the people that I love and respect the most. I am humbled, honored, and beyond overjoyed that I have the opportunity to be in front of you as proof that dreams do come true. It's kind of fun to do the impossible. I'm not saying it's impossible to be up here, but it isn't easy for any of us. High school is tough. I thought it would be impossible to play a sport stay academically strong, volunteer over 700 hours, travel the world, spend time with my friends, deal with challenges set forth, and still be happy, positive, and stress-free. I won't lie, having five AP classes to do work for was hard, but thing is, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I only now realize MPA is a reason that I overcame these moments of difficulty with endurance that I will have forever. I'd like to believe that none of us are here just because of our grades and our achievements, but because I gave my heart and my soul to this school. And I know that there will always be a part of me left here and a part of MPA in my heart. This school race, from Mrs. Arnold's Endangered Species Project in third grade, Mrs. Krause's organization skills, Mr. Smith's constant help with service, Mrs. Amberg's car rides, Mr. Drahazel's affinity for the Packers, you know, go Pack Go, and Mr. Malcolm as well. Today I found out Ms. Balker and Mrs. Keelan are graduating as well, so you guys are honorary members of the class of 2017 too. You have all inspired and shaped us, and I hope that we can all carry out the legacy and duty that we have to ourselves, one another, our families, and this school. Because even though we are graduating today, there's still a part of us left here. To say the class of 2017 is just another simple group of students graduating would be a lie. These individuals behind me, no matter if they were here for two, four, six, 12, or 14 years, have become more like a family. So we, class of 2017, we are the survivors. Though we lost soldiers in the fight called high school, I know that we will look back at these times with nostalgia. We are the class that has become the backbone of this school with members being involved in every aspect of the, of the academy, planning, diversity assemblies, academy day, musicals, sports, service, and every social event on the calendar. We were the class that built the Morgan Park Academy School Garden seven years ago, and we are the ones that renovated it. Our class became the first to go through four years of high school with a uniform, and that's not a small achievement. <laughs> we faced constant backlash for everything we did. We went on a retreat planned solely by our student council, and overall became one of the most involved classes the Academy has ever seen and will ever see. Even with all these accomplishments, we have had our own troubles. Just like any siblings have, the class of 2017 fights, loses brothers and sisters, gains some invaluable ones, and bonds. But through it all, we'll remember each other. No matter how far we go, whether it be the coasts of California, the top of the Rocky Mountains, the cornfields of the Midwest, the panhandle of Michigan, to the deep south, we will always have each other. Now, when I look at all of you, I don't just see teachers, staff, faculty, teammates, friends, other parents, but I see a family. They're not just in the back row. MPA is a family. My family. Our family. And one instance that made me realize how much my family cared for us was through the new addition to the campus. Behind me and to the right, as you hopefully can see, is the lasting impact the class of 2017 and I have on MPA, the greenhouse and outdoor classroom. Starting junior year, Banu and I wanted to make a radical change to not only service at MPA, but to the entire campus. This is when the, where the greenhouse comes in. A few months ago, I stood before a crowd of people just like you, peers, teachers, family, friends, the MPA community, and pitched our idea. Seeing the overwhelming support for our little project was and still is beyond belief. To have that many people care about your opinion and your idea is not something you will find at any other school. And this is what makes MPA special. They have cared for us, and now it's our time to give that care back by going out into the world and changing it. Thank you to every teacher that all of us have had through since childhood, raising not only me, but many of the seniors on stage today. Without your care and diligence, I'm safe to say none of us would be here today. And to my friends, you mean the world to me. Thank you to my beautiful grandparents for supporting Banu and I, and to my parents and every single parent in the audience today. Your kids have done so many great things and will do so much more in the future. And, 
And to my loving parents for not only pushing Bondu in my greatness, but for the entire class of 2017 to succeed. You never know there are parents, by the way, they cheer for everyone else louder than they cheer for us. <laughs> Maybe the reason I believe so much in superheroes is because of you, Anna Jim and Bubba Jim. You both truly are and will forever be one in my eyes. And lastly, I'd like to thank my sister, Bondu Glutches. For the last 18 years, we've been supporting each other, and without her motivating me, sorry, behind everything I do, I don't know where I'd be. I'm proud to call her my twin and ecstatic to be spending four more years with the person I love. And when you look at the class of 2017, you're looking at CEOs, artists, musicians, engineers, surgeons, doctors, psychologists, fashion marketers, and world travelers of the future. We are the forefront of change in our society, and it's up, up to us to embrace it. I encourage you, my fellow seniors, for another few minutes to think about what you want to do with your lives. Because if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. Next year will bring many hardships, but it's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get back up. I encourage you all to get out there, suck it up, and realize there's no gain without pain. And in the end, dream a better dream, and then work to make it real. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. As the graduates come forward, they will receive their diplomas from Mr. Rothy, our board chair, and congratulations from Mr. Drahazel and our upper school, our upper school principal. Divya Avula. In her 13 years with us, Divya has epitomized the MPA motto, be kind and do your best. Her travels has taken her around the world where she has practiced the acceptance of others she's first learned at home. Always quick to help, she is a talented flute player and dancer whose love of art and culture is evident in her mastery of Indian classical dance and music. We will miss her positive impact on the MPA community. She will be attending the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign next year. Aria Bachelor. Known for being quiet and polite, she is rarely spotted without a book in her hand. We will remember her as a thoughtful and considerate person who knows how to follow through on commitments to her studies, to her friends, and to her service initiatives. She was one of four student members of the Honor Council who helped to organize the planting of the berry tree in our school garden and volunteers with an organization for younger people suffering from Alzheimer's disease. She will be attending the University of Chicago. in a good mood, Hannah has been involved in many campus organizations, but her heart and soul belong to the theater department. Her expertise and cheerfulness will be sorely missed backstage at our plays and musical. She balanced the workload with an academic schedule as challenging as anyone in her class, and she did it all with a smile. She will be attending the University of Denver. Akeen Kofi. Akeen is a model of confidence and maturity, always polite, empathetic, and ready to lend a helping hand and a smile. He could fit in with any social group, making friends wherever he goes. One of our four student members of the Honor Council this year, 
He has a strong sense of justice and is always willing to stand up for his beliefs. He will be attending the University of Michigan. Banu Glutches. Banu is a disciplined student and a sensitive and strong young woman who always shows a genuine interest in helping others. She radiates kindness and humility. Despite her many achievements in the classroom and on the tennis courts, we have been thrilled to watch her grow from a shy child to a confident, assured young adult. Throughout thoughtful, talented, and hardworking, she will be attending the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. <laughs> Barat Glutches. Barat has been making an impact on the MPA community since her arrival in first grade. Her positive attitude and refusal to give in is evident in all of her endeavors, whether in the classroom or in the basketball court and soccer field. Learning from her parents how to be independently successful and compassionate toward others, it is no wonder she helmed the service council. As a well-traveled citizen, she truly lived the MPA mission. She will be attending the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Shin Min Hu. Matthew beautifully, beautifully blends a focused dedication to his studies and the serious matters in life with the wonderful generosity of spirit that endears him to everyone he meets. One of the most adult and mature members of this senior class, he is an unforgettable young man whose talents for math, science, and music surely will take him far. He will be attending Purdue University. Daniel J. Suthasan. Daniel is a quiet student, or so he would like us to think. His sense of humor and outgoing personality are evident amongst his friends, though they sometimes fly under the radar for teachers. Yet his many achievements are hard to overlook, whether on the golf course, in the classroom, in the concert band, or on the WISE team. He knows how to be successful. Daniel will be attending the University of California at Davis. <laughs> Alana Lay Phillips. I scarcely have time to complete the long list of Alana's accomplishments in her many years at MPA. Just this year, for instance, she was a Dance for Life choreograph, prom committee chair, diversity council member, basketball player, and much more. Especially notable was her leadership as student council president, where she worked selfishly and tirelessly all year to represent the interests of her classmates and to ensure that they had a fantastic senior year. She will be attending the University of Michigan. Amara Obasi. Amara is a charismatic storyteller who entertains friends and faculty alike with his colorful stories. Just ask to hear one of his many uncannily precise impressions of MPA teachers. <laughs> he is also a theater tech wizard, an unsung hero for countless plays, musical, and school assemblies, a fixture on the soccer team, and a frequent world traveler. He always tries to make sure everyone around him is having as much fun as he is. 
he will be attending Clemson University. Vincent Ogamu, one of the more stylish and colorful members of the class of 2017, Vincent approaches life with curiosity and a fine sense of humor. He's a great friend who would do anything for anyone, and he is always pushing himself to achieve his goals, whether that's becoming a captain for Willington House or filling his schedule with AP classes. And don't get him started about his carpets. He will be attending Loyola University, Chicago. <laughs> Celeste Ping Pumi Panet. Born in Thailand, Celeste joined us for a year-long exchange that we are so glad she decided to extend to three years. She has become such an indispensable member of our community that you think she had been here since kindergarten. Active with clubs such as Diversity Council and Service Council, she is perhaps known around campus for her amazing talents as a ballerina and her uncommonly professional leadership of our annual Dance for Life program. Her incredible maturity, organization, and positive attitude keep this MPA tradition going strong. She will be attending Drexel University. <laughs> Savi Rathi. One of our biggest pet lovers, Savi has a huge heart and an ability to spread joy and sunshine to everyone around her. She was an instrumental leader for the service council and the tennis team. Introspective, diligent, and fiercely devoted to her friends, she shows a great passion and skill for media and communications. She will be attending Claremont McKenna College. Robert Russ. We will always remember Robert's larger-than-life personality and his infectious smile. Always upbeat, enthusiastic, and eager to participate in a class, he is a great dancer and a great friend to our youngest students. We will also miss his play on the basketball court where he was our ever exciting team MVP in an all-conference selection. He will be attending Tennessee State University. David Salwan. <laughs> Davey is a true MPA ambassador. Comfortable in any social situation, he has led many events at school for both students and parents, led the diversity council, and was student council vice president. He is also our resident Nicki Minaj super fan <laughs> and is a self-appointed king of MPA. The graduating senior who looks best in a cap in, in a crown and a cape. He will be attending the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign. Brianna Schmidt. Brianna is one of the best athletes in the class, an outstanding softball player who was our team MVP and an all-conference pick. A key member of the service council, she is preparing for a career in the fashion industry by participating in the Nordstrom's Junior Fashion Ambassador Program. 
we will miss her dry sense of humor and her tell it like it is attitude. She will be attending the University of Alabama. Nicholas Seaton. Yeah. Yeah. Nick seems to be a quiet, keep it to keep to himself kind of guy. That is, until you see him at a girls' basketball game. His school spirit can be heard echoing down the street. Always willing to help others, Nick is a kind soul who brings passion to all of his endeavors. He will be attending Illinois State University. Shannon Shelby. Yeah! Brazilian and highly adaptable to challenges, Shani has been focused on a career in veterinarian medicine since she arrived in ninth grade. She is a kind and sensible young woman with a deep reserve of patience, commitment, and compassion. She contributed compassion passionately and respectfully to classroom discussions, wooed us on stage and dance for life, and impressed teachers with her earnest hard work. She will be attending the University of Missouri. Anastasia Stanley. We are so glad that Anna is part of the MPA community. We only wish she had, we had met her sooner. Joining us for just her senior year, she immediately established herself as one of the sharpest, hardest working members of the class and a perfect fit for MPA. Her involvement in music, theater, and sports showed a multitude of talents that contributed greatly to our school community. She will be attending Loyola University Chicago. Cecilia Tepema. Cecilia is enthusiastic about everything and appreciates life fully. In addition to her sharp intellect, she is a wise soul who surely will go on to flourish in college and beyond. An uncommon musical talent, she asks probing questions and loves learning. She knows what it is, what she's interested in and passionate about, including fighting for social change for those who are marginalized. She will be attending Lawrence University. <laughs> Maria Uliat. <laughs> Maria is an outspoken intellectual debater. When she sets her thoughts on something, she's going to achieve it. Whether it's something as small as getting her preferred seat in the lunchroom or something as large as coordinating a donation drive that produced more than a thousand winter coats for Syrian refugees. She's going places and she will get there fast. As anyone knows who has seen her behind the wheel in the parking lot can attest to it. She will be attending the University of Michigan. Evan Vallis. Yeah. Evan has attended MPA since preschool, and we have enjoyed watching him grow up before our eyes. He is a laid-back personality, but those of us who know him, we have also found hidden depths of inquisition and sensitivity. His high energy level was a huge asset for our basketball team, and it helped a lot in running down frisbees here in Jones Bowl. 
Evan will be attending the University of Iowa next year. Trillian Wagner. Tilly is a creative spirit by nature. She looks for the fun in all of her endeavors and is quickly able to find an enterprising way to achieve her goals. Her family's love of all people made them a true Hotel Wagner for international students, and her love of music and animals are evident at all times. If Tilly could not be found in the art center, then she was outside on the bench drawing. She is taking a gap year to focus on entrepreneurship. Eli Wallenstein yeah. has played over the course of 13 years at MPA. Eli's breathtaking artistic talents and fiercely independent spirit mark her as an unforgettable member of the senior class. Beyond her creative fashion, hair, and makeup choices is a dependable, generous, and caring young woman who is passionate about everything from the Swedish language to criminal justice reform. We won't soon forget her art, her heart, and her wide-ranging intelligence. She will be attending the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Elaine By Williams. <laughs> By is a quiet, kind student. In the classroom, her nature is to work with others toward a common goal and achieve it with calmness. But she has a fire burning underneath that comes out in the athletic arena. On the court or on the field, she is a fierce competitor who will do whatever it takes to win. She will be attending the University of Illinois at Chicago. Ashley Wilson. <laughs> Ashley stands out for her warmth, caring, and friendliness. And in a senior class with a lot of big personalities, for being a tranquil, non-drama young woman with a sense of peace about her. She was an important contributor for the volleyball team, acted in drama productions, and shared her considerable talent for performance by helping to direct Dance for Life the past two years. She will be attending DePaul University. <laughs> Etta Young. Yeah. One of his teachers put it best, TK lives on a different plane than most of us. Equally passionate about video games, Japanese pop music, and the mysteries of mathematics, he often pops up seemingly out of nowhere with a flurry of energy reminiscent of the Tasmanian Devil cartoon character and indicative of his keen intellect and the fierce curiosity with which he attacks life. TK will be taking a gap year next year. <laughs> Sylvia Zhao. Ever eager to help others, Sylvia shows classmates and teachers great love and respect and inspires from them the same. She is an accomplished cook, a talented pianist, a singer, and an unfailing, positive, and respectful young woman who approaches challenges with optimism and confidence. She will be attending New York University.
congratulations to our class of 2017. for coming. Our new graduates will leave first as we rehearsed and receive their guests around the semicircle at Jones Bowl. Thank you.